Hello, welcome to my How to Play Deceit 2 video. If you are unaware of what Deceit 2 is, here is a brief explanation. Deceit 2 is a 6 to 9 player social deduction horror game sequel to, if you can believe it, Deceit. Like its name entails, the game involves a lot of lying. Two people in the group will be infected and are trying to sacrifice the rest of you. Cooperate with each other, reveal who is infected, and escape the ritual of deceit. Deceit 2 will be coming out on PC very soon after this video will be posted on September 14th. And if you are catching this video before then, make sure to wishlist the game on Steam. It will be $15 on release and have localized pricing depending on your country. Console releases will unfortunately be later down the line, but they hope to get them out on those platforms by the time Halloween rolls around. Now, actually getting into the gameplay of Deceit 2, once you load into a match, you will be met with your fellow players. You can use your proximity-based voice chat to talk to each other, or if you do not have a mic, there will also be a quick chat and also pinging options. Infected players also will have their special infected chat where they can just talk to their teammate. Once you adapt to your surroundings, you will want to start completing tasks. Throughout the map, there will be objects that lost souls are hiding in. Complete a small objective at each object and free the soul for the peddler. Like tuning a radio or putting together a picture. Each time you do one, you'll get a soul. And once enough souls have been collected by everyone, you'll be able to choose from the list of items in the peddler's shop. These can range from damage items like the gun or knuckle dusters to light items that hurt the terrors like a camera to deceitful items like the mask that will hide your identity as someone else or the medallion that turns you invisible. If you are having trouble finding tasks to complete, you can use your second sight ability to find some. This ability will show you any lost souls that have not been collected yet so you are more easily able to find them. As an infected player, Second Sight ability will be more powerful than your innocent foes. You will also be able to see other players, including your teammate, as well as weak points whenever you use it. These weak points will be all over the map and are the key for the infected bringing forth the in-between period. Once at least one is shattered by an infected, a countdown begins before the reality phase is broken. The more weak points that are shattered also contribute to how long the in-between phase will last. Make sure to keep an eye out for any suspicious activity around them as an innocent and report any that you see are broken. If you catch someone that you believe to be infected, down them with either your fists or another damage item like the pistol to start a banishing ritual. This is how innocents are going to be able to vote out the infected. With enough votes, someone is banished from the game and once both infected are voted, the game will end. Though make sure to be careful not to vote out any innocents as you are only strong in numbers. The infected will also have extra abilities to help them out with their objectives in the reality or the in-between in the form of mutations. These range from a mutation that immediately activates a random weak point, to teleporting everyone in the game randomly, to even hiding everyone's identity for a short period. Be sure to make the most of these as an infected, as they are integral to your success. Once the in-between is brought forth, the dynamic changes. Your damage items will no longer function, including your fists, so you are going to have to rely on your light items. These will help you in evading the terrors, as well as keeping your sanity at bay. Everyone will have a sanity meter that you need to keep in check to stay safe. Running too low will reveal you to the terrors, stop you from running, and allow you to be sacrificed by them if they catch you, so you will need to make sure to stay high on sanity at all times. Be wary of the rift eyes of the in-between, as if they see you, they will drain your sanity, as well as some tarot abilities being able to do that as well. You can stop the eyes with light items, regain some by doing tasks in the in-between, or refill your sanity with the serum that you can get in the shop. Coming across any terrors, your only choice will be to run and survive. Wall cracks and vaults will help you with this, but only temporarily. Make use of light items to stun terrors and get away while you can. As the infected, you will have the ability to turn to and back from these terror forms freely. Chase down and grab innocents to try and sacrifice them before the in-between runs out. You will have the ability to break down destructible walls, 
and close off cracks, so make sure to use those to your advantage. The base terror's ability has a chokehold to drain the innocent sanity, which if it is too low, they will be sacrificed. It can also block light attacks with its hands, but with the trade-off of it being very slow while doing so. Its final ability is a rage. It will run forward and scream, boosting its speed, while drastically draining the sanity of anyone it sees. There are only two ways for the in-between to end. That is either with a sacrifice when the infected successfully capture an innocent, or if all the innocents successfully evade capture. Either way will bring back the reality phase. In the brief period before you go back to reality though, you will have the chance to vote on people that you believe are infected. This will not instantly vote them out of the game, but instead it's like pre-voting them. As next time they are downed, your vote will be placed on them regardless of where you are on the map. A couple other things that may help you with figuring out who is infected, or help you mask the truth, are points of interest. These may differ on the different maps, but with the release map Asylum, there are a lot of different ones. There is a speaker system that will allow you to be heard across the map, an inspection machine that will show one person the role of who is scanned, a blackboard that you can write information on, but also, for the infected, a generator that can be broken either by hand or through a mutation that will stop all tasks from being done until it is repaired so be wary of anyone near it after it gets broken. Nearing the late game stage, after enough players have done enough tasks throughout the game, the escape key will unlock in the peddler's shop. Any innocent will be able to grab it, but you want to make sure that you are ready as this will start the ending sequence. After it is taken by someone, the in-between immediately starts, and you will not return to reality after this. If the terrors are able to catch who picked up the key, they will win the game. So make sure to survive if you have it, and if you don't, protect whoever does so they can make it to the door and open it. Now that most of the main game has been covered, I want to talk about a few alternate things. One is the different roles other than the innocent and infected. The game will be launching with the guardian role, which is a form of innocent. The guardian will be able to protect one person per night, using their second sight ability. This means that if they are caught and sacrificed by a terror, they will not die, and will return to the reality with everyone else. Though, make sure to use this ability wisely, as no one will be able to be protected twice. More roles will be introduced after release, so make sure to keep an eye out for new ones in the future. Speaking of the future, the game won't have just one terror forever, and more will be coming with DLCs after release. The first one will be the War Torn, which will be a werewolf. This was in Deceit 1, but we can't really speculate on their abilities yet, as the Deceit 1 experiment or base terror has completely different abilities in Deceit 2. But we do know that future terrors will all have different abilities to utilize. These new terrors are assumed to be released alongside new maps as well, which means new tasks, new ways to escape terrors, and new points of interest. Also, thankfully, despite being designed and coming out with the new terrors, the maps will be free to everyone, as they were in Deceit 1. The next one is going to be Project Wurgen, a research station on werewolves with an indoor and outdoor section. And with all that out of the way, I'm going to be moving to everything outside of the gameplay, starting with how you'll actually be getting into games. There will be two ways, both quick play and public or private custom lobbies. On release, you should just be able to queue into a random game in your region, or host or join a custom game. This would allow you to make sure that you're only playing with people that you want to, as well as changing a bit of the base settings to tweak them to your group's liking. Now, outside of games, you might also notice that you have accumulated favor, which is the in-game currency that you earn throughout games. This also includes the accolades system, which are basically the completable challenges that will award you this favor. To spend this currency, you will need to go to the Emporium tab, where you can either use the booth, which should be like the loot booth in Deceit 1, or purchasing items and mutations directly. There will also be another type of currency that you can purchase called shillings. This will mainly be for obtaining different cosmetics for your character. And briefly, I do want to just go over how not to play the game. Deceit 2 is going to be moderated, 
and you should be playing fairly as to not be punished for breaking rules. This may include griefing or trolling people, being discriminatory or toxic, and even abusing known bugs or cheating. Just overall, be a good person and you won't have anything to worry about, and make sure to report anyone that you see breaking any of the rules. And well, that just about covers everything you need to know about how to play Deceit 2. If you've made it this far, thank you very much for watching it all the way through, as these kinds of videos take a lot of work scripting and putting everything together. If you liked it and are interested in Deceit 2 content, I recommend subscribing, as I have already made a lot of content for Deceit 2 and will be making so much more after release. Anyway, so thank you all for watching, and I really hope you all enjoyed. Uh,